are endocrine disruptors in the environment, the cause of men's low testosterone, and also the potential for women's breast cancer. We're going to discuss it with an author of a book after this, so keep watching. Hi, I'm Mike, the founder of Balance for Hormones, where we help men and women on their journey to optimal hormone balance. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and leaving comments so we can answer them in our next video. So today I'm here with a friend and author, Dr. Abraham Krieger. He founded Testo Cream and he's written a book called Listen to Your Hormones and it's about men's hormones and all that goes into it. And part of the book discusses endocrine disrupting hormones. And we're going to discuss what those are. We've been asked by uh, one of our, our viewers to discuss what those endocrine disrupting hormones are. And that's what we're going to do today. So hi, Abraham. Hi, Dr. Krieger. How are you? Just fine. Nice to see you nice again. Nice to see you again. So, um, you know, we hear a lot about endocrine disrupting hormones. We've um, we've talked about before on the channel and it's something that was brought up recently by uh, one, of, one of our viewers or recent comments. We wanted to address it. What what are the main endocrine disruptors that we need to look out for? First of all, you might wonder why it is that suddenly, and this is over the past decade, there's been an increase in fertility clinics, uh, an increase in breast cancer in women, uh, a decrease in men's uh, sperm level. As a matter of fact, one of the latest studies shows that British men have a decrease in their testosterone of almost 40% uh, over the past decade. And in part, this is related to what is happening in our environment. Most people are aware that pesticides are used on foods to control pests, uh, mostly insects, that are harmful or eat or destroy the crop. What they don't realize is that almost every pesticide known to man is estrogenic in nature. What that means is when they are incorporated into the body, usually because they've been concentrated in the fat of animals or on certain crops, they act like estrogen. What that does is it lowers sperm counts, increases risks of uh, sexually uh, hormone-related cancers such as prostate cancer and breast cancer and now has even been shown to be involved in a disease, a degenerative disease called Parkinson's. What is happening is that Roundup or glyphosate um, has now been linked to Parkinson's disease and those people who gardeners, landscapers, who used it to control weeds, and also it's used on many crops, uh, seem to be developing Parkinson's at a more rapid rate. But even more important than that, because of the fact that not everyone uses pesticides, is the fact that women are developing breast cancer at a younger age, men are developing testosterone deficiency at a younger age and this is occurring in levels we have never seen before and the other situation that's developed is it's all recent um, when i think back i've been in practice now for about 50 years when i think back to my first few decades in practice there was not such a thing as infertility it was almost unheard of most people were trying to have less children. Now, almost 30% of couples, either the male or the female, is infertile. And fertility clinics have sprung up everywhere. The main problem seems to be low testosterone in men, which causes decreased active sperm. We need a huge number of sperm to cause pregnancy somewhere around 20 million sperm per cubic centimeter. And women who are unable to conceive because of either defects in their reproductive system or changes in the hormones. So estrogenic compounds 
increase women's estrogen, which increases the risk of cells multiplying more rapidly, and this is what causes breast cancer. Breast cancer was once a disease of older women. You would see it in the 80s. And now we've seen breast cancer in women as early as in their 20s and 30s. Also, young girls are maturing much earlier. It used to be that girls and boys matured around the same age, girls about a year younger, but now girls are maturing at age nine. And boys are maturing at a later date. Uh, used to be 12 to 13. Some boys are not maturing till 14 or 15. I think this might be related to the uh, some men or the, the reference range for men or the average testosterone for men now is less than generations ago. Um, I, I'm wondering if the, the pesticides, the chemicals, the, the xenoestrogens are, are partly to, or all to blame. There doesn't seem to be any other reason, Michael. Uh, there's no reason while men are getting healthier and stronger that their testosterone levels shouldn't be running in the same ranges that they were in the past. Young men have higher levels, older men have lower levels, but certainly they should still be able to get erections, uh, they should still be able to conceive. But what's happening is not only is there an increase in erectile dysfunction, again an estrogen related problem, but there's also a decrease in testosterone levels, meaning that sperm counts have dropped. So earlier I mentioned something about sperm counts in uh, British men. Again, the figure is somewhere around 40% of British men have less sperm than their counterparts as much as 20 years ago. So that's correlating with the low testosterone levels as well. They seem to both be dropping compared uh, to their grandfathers, for instance. Correct. So your grandfather has more testosterone than you. And we've seen older men they came to do blood tests and they would tend to have much higher levels than some of the younger men that would come to, to just measure the testosterone level of this. Some men were just curious to see what they were. You mean normal men? Yeah, men, well, some men may have, have someone bought them a, a birthday present and they bought them a blood test and uh, they were so curious to see where the levels were. You know. That's where balance my hormones <laughs> yeah. comes in, right? The men that would order, like, they would find out that their levels were, were quite low or some of the older men in the older generation find out they're, they're a bit higher. Than the, than the younger ones. Maybe the exposure through the formative years wasn't as great uh, with some of these uh, xenoestrogens. That's a good point. And again, how do we incorporate pesticides into our body? Uh, and what's important to realize is that humans are at the top of the food chain. What that means is we are the animals, the humans, that are eating all the animals below us in the food chain chickens, cows, fish, um, lamb, etc., etc., um, which are subsequently also eating lower in the food chain. So fish are eating, bigger fish are eating smaller fish. Smaller fish are eating um, shrimps, little shrimp and larvae and various ocean dwellers some of which are bottom feeders, because the pesticide residues are also falling into the water. What this is doing is it's creating a more acidic state in the oceans, which of course is contributing to climate change. So the whole cycle is involved. Um, ever since we first started realizing, Silent Spring was written by um, an author who warned everyone, and this was back in approximately 30 years ago that we were heading for a epidemic of pesticide related diseases and we had to stop using them on our foods now since the organic movement has come along some farmers have done that but the majority particularly the larger farmers are still using pesticides and these pesticides are incorporated into our foods and then concentrated in our fat. That's what eating on the food chain means. But they are also concentrated in the fat of animals that we eat. So we get the whole load of pesticides. If cows are fed on grain that's been contaminated um, with pesticides, we get all of that pesticide residue. And 
believe it or not, the amount that's required to create a problem is minuscule, as little as 13 parts per trillion is enough to trigger cancer cells. Especially if you're exposed to it all the time then, if you're always eating food that's contaminated with it. Right, and the problem is most food, except that food that is grown organically, is contaminated. You can't taste it, um, and 13 parts per trillion is barely anything. I mean, a trillion is a huge number. If you try to count to a trillion, it would take almost 3,000 years if you counted one every second. Um, a billion would take hundreds of years. A million only takes 11 days. Uh, that gives you a perspective. In other words, this tiny amount, 13 parts per trillion, is the cutoff for what causes cancer. And if most men and women are tested we find that their pesticide residues are far above 13 parts per trillion. So, I mean, it's all very depressing. What can we do to decrease the amount of residue, pesticide residue in our bodies? And the only thing we can do is change our diet, move more towards a plant-based diet. And people might say, well, but they're spraying plants just as much as animals are incorporating it. That's not exactly the case. Because animals are higher on the food chain, animals that we eat, and anything poisonous is concentrated in the human body and in an animal body into the fat. If you don't eat that animal fat, and if you eat, let's say, more fruits and vegetables, even non-organic, you can peel them, you can take the coating that's been sprayed off. Plants do not incorporate pesticides into their structure. Animals incorporate pesticides into their structure. Okay. What about microplastics? Because you know, there was some article that's written about um, plants or, or ap ap apples having microplastic in, in, inside everywhere. apples, food that was grown. Plastics are present everywhere. They're ubiquitous. They're present in the oceans. They're concentrated in fish uh, and animals that live in the oceans. But again, Plants like kelp, which is a seaweed, have no microplastics in them. They don't incorporate them into their structure. On the other hand, fish that swim high up in the water, fast-moving fish, swordfish, salmon, tuna, have much less microplastics than bottom dwellers, halibut and cod and shrimp and lobster. So. Making food choices, and it's also better for the planet, um, that move towards a plant-based diet, decrease your exposure to pesticides. And other than visit you in uh, Balance My Hormones and find out how low someone's testosterone has actually dropped to, there's very little that they can do other than watch their food intake. And what about sun lotions or moisturizers as well, go and avoid those or find uh, alternative products that don't contain those because there are um, well, phthalates. You know, phthalates were the number one toxic product um, that was in the environment in relation to plastics because many of the compounds that affect hormones are used to create plastics. Since obviously plastics are not going to disappear, um, what we have to do, again, it's better for the environment, is go back to glass containers, recycling, uh, and recycling in a way not that we throw our plastic into recycle bins, because that's not really going to change anything. What are they going to do with, after it goes in the recycle bin? It's going back to glass bottles for milk, uh, glass bottles for storage, uh, buying things in non-plastic containers. Uh, there are other containers that can be made uh, that don't have plastic, cardboard, etc. And watch the intake of high pesticide foods. Okay. So it looks like that's something we can try. Absolutely. There is something we if, can do. If your hormones have been disrupted due to the uh, environmental toxins... Then that's when they have to visit your site yeah. and see if they can be helped. 
Um, again, it's fortunate that there is something available for men. Women, on the other hand, also need testosterone for their sex drive. And there are so many couples where the man has low testosterone and has become impotent. The woman also subsequently has low testosterone and high estrogen. And so we have a bunch of people who are Balance. miserable, unbalanced, basically because they've unknowingly consumed toxins that have changed their hormone milieu. And the more people that are aware of it, the sooner something will be done about it. But at this point, there is irrefutable proof that hormones are affected by endocrine disruptors from plastics and from pesticides. You just have to keep uh, trying to help those that, uh, that do end up deficient in, in hormones and, and trying to balance them out. And uh, yeah, we've talked about this before on, on the channel. Uh, we, we had other people, we, we talked about it, and this seems to be the recurring theme and maybe the cause behind so many patients uh, talking about, about low testosterone. I was on a, a program, a, a radio, program um, after that article came out and you know they were just laughing and giggling about um, you know oh yeah ha, ha, the, the chemicals are, are causing the low testosterone what's this all about and I thought I thought that wasn't you know very nice well it's so much of it is ignorance yeah. it's not like the media is telling us every day change your diet uh, watch your plastic consumption etc etc no there's much more focus on um, crime and wars and conditions that we have very little that the average person can do anything about and increase in diseases uh, for populations that have been uh, fortunate enough to develop vaccines and medical techniques that allow us to live longer and longer as we live longer and longer the last few decades are getting worse and worse. There's increase in people in nursing homes. Um, this country doesn't deal well with the elderly as compared to other countries. In the UK, the, UK uh, the United States, the Western world, uh, the Asian world is much better in terms of keeping parents at home, grandparents at home, not putting them away in nursing homes to basically die just wait till they die and even though we live longer we're not living better and one of the advantages when t testosterone was first discovered it was called the elixir of life and to date it is the elixir of life that is decreasing in our population because of these endocrine disruptors and Sooner or later, something has to be done or nobody is going to want to live into their 90s and 100s if they're crippled, uh, limited, demented, um, arthritic, etc. What's the benefit? Uh, and yet, they all have an opportunity as they get older, as we get older, to change what we put into our bodies. Endocrine disruptors have to end up in your body to cause a problem. If you don't let them into your body, you're not going to have the same problem as people who don't pay attention and just eat everything, whatever the taste, and don't realize that our environment is becoming poisoned yeah. and we have to do something about it. Yeah. You have to consider yeah. these. If you want to decrease endocrine disruptors, the only thing you can do is modify your diet. There's no other way to get rid of them. Sounds good. Sounds like a plan. Um, really appreciate you talking about this. I know My pleasure. Um, the other one, the, our viewers are, will appreciate it as well. So thank you. My and pleasure. Uh, for those who are watching, again, uh, feel free to subscribe and leave your comments. What are your thoughts? Would you go on a vegetarian uh, diet or a vegan diet? Um, do you think that will help? Have you been on one of these diets? Will it? has it helped you in your quality of life um so yeah we want to know and uh again thanks again for coming on and read my book oh yeah and read and read uh you can also visit uh dr krieger's website uh, wellnessmd.com and wellnessmd.com and listen to your hormones and this is your hormones book so we'll put the the link uh below so uh, thanks again good seeing you